in discussing cells, we want to learn not just the parts of the cell, but how things move around the cell. And a really good example of movement within the cell is ribosome biogenesis. And we use the term biogenesis to talk about not just what what ribosomes make, but how they're made. So if we said ribosome synthesis, we might think we're talking about what ribosomes make. So biogenesis just is sort of a fancy word to mean how ribosomes get made. So there's a number of ways to look at a ribosome. Ribosomes are organelles. They're not bound by a membrane the way that, say, the Golgi apparatus or lysosomes or the nucleus is. They consist of two halves or parts or subunits. So the small subunit and the large subunit. You'll sometimes see the subunits referred to by a number and a unit called S. So the 30S and the 50S ribosome, ribosomal subunits and prokaryotes, for example. That S is just a unit that refers to how big, how well and how fast something sediments in a sucrose gradient, it's because molecular weight isn't big enough to reflect the size of these things. So there's sort of, a ribosome is a lot smaller than say the Golgi, but it's a whole lot bigger than a protein. In fact, they're made of a minimum of say about 33 proteins and at least one RNA of say 2,000 base pairs, so they're pretty big. So, but so sometimes they just get drawn in this blob view. You can see it's just the big blob, and sometimes the large subunit is drawn on top, and sometimes it's drawn underneath the small subunit. But if we look at it in a more detailed view, we can see all the different molecules that make them up. And so there's lots of individual proteins, plus there's all this RNA. And so on the left is shown a small subunit, and the right is shown a large subunit, and they're actually from even from two different species, um, but they're relative arrangements. And before we go any further, I just wanted to have an aside about the term subunit. So the, when we talk about, say, an enzyme that's made of a couple of different proteins, we talk about a catalytic subunit and a regulatory subunit, in this case, each subunit is one polypeptide. And, but for the ribosome, the subunit, as we said, is a whole lot of molecules. And so if we really drew these things to scale, the enzyme would be way, way, way smaller than the ribosome itself. And so often be aware that in drawings of the cell, proteins made by the ribosomes are drawn as though they're as big as the whole ribosomal subunit, and that's not really the case. All right. So back to ribosome biogen. So what I show here is this cartoon of a cell. And so the cytoplasm is out here, and this is the nucleus. Uh, sorry, nucleus, nucleus. I can spell nucleus. <laughs> and the uh, this area here that I've sort of a cutaway view of the nuclear membrane, and these represent nuclear pores. And remember that. The nucleolus, and I'll spell it right this time, nucleolus or nucleolus, is a region within the nucleus. It's not sort of a separate, it's not membrane bound, it's just a subcompartment. So I'll change to a dotted line and I'll sort of draw a little area like that. That's going to be my nucleolus. And DNA, so we'll make the DNA, say we'll make that blue. The unwound chromosomes are in the nucleus, and a given chromosome might have part of its region in the nucleolus and part sort of outside of the nuclear region, and it might go through like this, and maybe there's another chromosome, but it's like this, and we're going to come and go over like that. Okay. And the DNA, of course, contains genes. Genes are 
transcribed, and the product of transcription is always RNA. And RNA comes in different categories, just like proteins. Like some proteins are enzymes, and some proteins are membrane proteins. When in RNA, some RNA functions as messenger RNA, and it'll be translated to produce a protein. And then other RNAs is ribosomal RNA, or tRNA, or small nuclear RNAs. And so in the nucleolus, the DNA in the nucleolus contains genes that are needed to make the parts of the ribosomal subunits. And so I think I'm going to change colors here, and we'll use sort of two different colors to represent RNA. So say messenger RNA, so genes that are going to code for proteins, right, there's a number of them, and so a, a protein gene here in the nucleolus, this would be a ribosomal, and that's what the little r means, a ribosomal protein, uh, erase that, uh, try to erase that, um, a ribosomal protein gene, and let's go back to my orange, ribosomal protein gene. And so this would be just a regular gene, and non, oh, this one over here would be a, a gene that just codes for some other kind of protein. And also in the nucleolus are genes that code for ribosomal RNA, so ribosomal RNA. And this is just going to be the RNA part of the ribosome. And there are a number of different, let me go back to this color, right? We said, you know, there are many different proteins in the ribosome. Uh, so, we said the 33 different proteins minimum in a small ribosomal subunit. So there's going to be a number of different, we'll just, n number of different proteins, we'll just focus on one. So out in the cytoplasm, let's go to the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm contains, it's a red, ribosomal subunits, and there are small subunits, and there are large subunits, right? And unless the ribosomes, the ribosomes are in the process of translating something, they're separate from each other. So a messenger RNA, and that's this color, so this messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus, go out through a pore, out to the cytoplasm, oh, and here it is. It's messenger RNA, M RNA. And it will be engaged by a ribosome, and so a ribosome is going to bind it a small subunit and a large subunit, right? And it will sort of, and it'll move sort of down the messenger RNA, and as it moves down the messenger RNA, it's going to make a protein. And so let's make that protein, oh, I'm going to have to change colors here. Let's make protein, let's make it a green protein. So initially you just make a lot of it, and then the ribosome that's down here, it's a little bigger protein. And this protein, when the ribosome is finished reading all the information in the messenger RNA, this protein is complete and it's released, and then it's going to have to go back into the nucleus, back into the nucleolus, and here is the protein, right? And it's going to go into the nucleus because it contains a nuclear localization signal as, as part of its primary sequence. Once it gets back into the nucleolus, that, and of course there are a number of other proteins that have been made, they're going to assemble along with that RNA. Remember the ribosomal RNA that was right here? Oh, that's supposed to be a different color. Uh, ribosomal RNA that's right there. There we go. So this ribosomal RNA will complex with this, and all together, the protein plus the RNA, and I'll make a little bracket here, that's going to assemble, we're going to make that red, a ribosomal subunit. Now, I'm sorry, I had to change colors there, but I only have so many shades of whatever. So this ribosomal subunit. Now, the ribosomal subunit, once it's made, it's got to go back out to the cytoplasm. So it's got to travel through a nuclear pore, back out to the cytoplasm, and that's where this pool of new ribosomal subunits come from. The cell is 
constantly making ribosomal subunits because it needs a fresh supply of ribosomes. Ribosomal subunits would only last, I don't know, a couple of days or so, give or take, and then it's going to break down and all the components will be broken down and recycled, and so you're constantly needing more of them. In the meantime, of course, these other messenger RNAs for genes outside the nucleolus, for just so all the other kinds of proteins that are in the cell, right, those were orange, so let's go back to this, right, so these are non ribosomal proteins. They're just other, pro other protein coding genes, right? These are also moving through the pores out to the nucleus, right? And there it is, and they're going to be engaged by ribosomes, right? And they'll make protein, so let's make them a different shade of green. It's a different, you will make it that color, right? So that's going to make that protein. And so, and some of those proteins, depending on what their job is, right? if they're being made on free ribosomes, they're going to either stay in the cytoplasm, right, right here. Maybe they're going to go back into the nucleus because it's a histone protein or something. It's got to go back into the nucleus uh, or it's got to go into the mitochondria. We didn't draw mitochondria here. Let's draw mitochondria, right? It's got to go into the mitochondria. That's another possibility for location. So the idea here is to give you a feeling for all of the movement that's going on in the cell.